An update on our mission to the sun. Preparations continue for Orion's upcoming flight test. And a science chat about two upcoming out of this world encounters. A few of the stories to tell you about this week at NASA. Signals from our Parker Solar Probe indicate the spacecraft is alive and well after skimming by the sun at just 15 million miles from our star's surface. A status beacon sent on November 7th indicates all instruments are running and collecting science data. Parker will study the sun's corona to solve long-standing mysteries and should help improve forecasts of space weather which can affect spacecraft and astronauts in orbit as well as communications on Earth. Our Kennedy Space Center in Florida received the European service module for our Orion spacecraft from Germany on November 6th. The service module will propel, power, and cool Orion during Exploration Mission 1, Orion's first uncrewed flight test with our Space Launch System rocket that will demonstrate our capability to extend human existence to the Moon and beyond. NASA and the European Space Agency will participate in a November 16th event at Kennedy to mark the arrival of the service module. That event will air live on NASA television and the agency's website at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We teamed with the U.S. Navy and others for the seventh in a series of tests off the California coast to verify and validate procedures and hardware needed to recover Orion after it splashes down in the Pacific Ocean when it returns from deep space exploration missions. A test version of Orion was used to evaluate recovery operations in various conditions. There are two more recovery tests planned for this series. On November 5th, our administrator Jim Bridenstein gave keynote remarks at National Geographic Society headquarters in Washington, D.C. before a showing of the Project Mars competition's short films and National Geographic's Mars series. During his remarks, Bridenstine talked about our InSight mission scheduled to land on the Red Planet November 26th. This InSight lander is critical to a future human exploration activity on the surface of Mars. What we're going to be able to do is create a 3D image of what's happening inside Mars and ultimately how that could jeopardize human astronauts in the future. A November 7th science chat focused on upcoming encounters for two of our planetary missions, OSIRIS-REx and New Horizons. OSIRIS-REx, our first asteroid sample return mission, will arrive at asteroid Bennu on December 3rd and then deliver a sample from the asteroid to Earth in September 2023. On New Year's Day 2019, our New Horizons spacecraft will make the farthest space probe flyby in history when it encounters Kuiper Belt object Ultima Thule, which is approximately 4 billion miles from Earth. You can see the entire episode at go.nasa.gov slash smallworldschat. These flight cable harnesses assembled at our Langley Research Center in Virginia will be used by the Mars Entry, Descent and Landing Instrumentation 2 or MEDLEY 2 during our Mars 2020 mission's entry through the red planet's atmosphere. MEDLEY 2 will measure pressure, temperature, heat flux and radiation on the capsule that encloses the Mars 2020 rover. For an interactive look at how the mission will land, check out go.nasa.gov slash Mars 2020 landing. That's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on the web at nasa.gov slash talk.